sitting back. And enjoying a nice cup of hot chocolate. Get cozy. And hang on for the loop. Mm, that sounds nice. Four, three, two, one. I'm Ricky. And I'm Jamie. Ricky, do you like hot chocolate or are you more of a hot cider kind of person? Ooh, definitely hot chocolate. I love it when you can add some cinnamon to it and some marshmallows. Ah, oh, forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I like hot cider during the fall, and I like hot chocolate during the winter time, but only if it has marshmallows and or whipped cream. Today on The Loop Show, we're talking about a hot topic, hot cocoa. No, hot cheese. No, for real, money. Ooh, money's on that list of things that can sometimes be hard to talk about. People in the Bible worried and fought about money a lot. All the adults I know fight and worry about money too. Maybe you have some money and you don't know what to do with it. If you're not sure how much to give, this show is for you. Now we know that generosity is more than just about money, but we are facing the topic of money head on. We don't pull punches here on The Loop Show. No, we don't play games. And unrelated, we are going to a segment called Action Figure Theater. Ooh. Do you speak English? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> just kidding. He probably thought I just bad. <laughs> do you think having money is bad? Are you talking about money, bucks, cabbage, cash? Is having money bad? Are you really asking me, is having money bad? No, money's not bad. Money's great. With, uh, I've got big plans with my money. I'm saving it up so I can buy a rocket and blast the moon out of the smithereens. I'm planning on destroying the moon. Have I told you that, Daryl? Is it money the root of all evil? No, m money's not the root of all evil. T that taco I had last night's the root of all evil. If you know what I'm saying. Oh my gosh, my stomach. What are you talking about? Are you talking about dough? Coin? Currency? How can money help? Once I get that money, I'm gonna spend it on a brand new video game. I, I get $58, I get $59, I get $60, I spend it, it's gone. Like, I am a giver, so like, I want to give it all away, but uh, my parents are like, hey, you can't give away everything that you have because like we bought it for you. And I'm like, well, that doesn't sound very generous. How do you make money? I don't know, I just take it from other dinosaurs. And then I like spending it at the dino store. Hey, street man, you talking about legal tender? You talking about Lolly? Do you two fight about money? Oh, uh, we're roommates, and uh, yeah, we get into it. Uh, we definitely do. No, we never. I mean, I don't remember us having ever any fights about money. Uh, dude, you never pay for your half of anything. What are you talking about, man? And I did the dishes last night. I'm not talking about the dishes. It's about favors. I scratch his scales, he scratches mine. I don't have scales. I've never had scales. I've never had scales. I don't really have any fights about money because I don't really have any money. My mom and dad fight about money a lot, I can tell you that. What's that Target box on on uh, on the front porch? And my mom is like, I didn't do anything, I didn't order anything. We needed new candles, I'm sorry. And 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 then and then we have a lot of candles. I'm not done yet. You talking about pelf? You talking about loot? Can you be generous without money? No, of course not. You need money to be generous. Everybody knows that. Generous? Without money? I've never thought of that. I mean, I don't have money because I'm a horse. What, you want to know about tender? Is that what it is? Well, I could tell you. What was the question? Paul writes to Timothy, want to change your neighborhood. Tell them to use their money to do good They should be rich in good works And generous to those in need Paul says to teach your sisters and your brothers Always be ready to share with others They should be rich in good works And generous to those in need Doing this, they will be storing up their treasure 
as a good foundation for the future so that everyone may experience true life. Paul sends a warning, wealth will never fill the void. Put your trust in what can never be destroyed. May we be rich in good works and generous to those in need. May we be rich in good works and generous to those in need. I'm really enjoying learning about money while sipping on this hot beverage. Yeah, this is an unruinable moment. Ooh, hello, mystery hand. Somebody smart took chocolate and heated it up to make a delicious beverage. True. Which got us wondering, are there other beverages that would be better heated up? Take a big sip and let us know. Better hot or not? We have uh, three mugs with a variety of colors and none of this looks like it's chocolate. We are told that this first one is hot orange juice. You warm up apple juice to get apple cider. Why not do the same thing with orange juice? I think it's worth trying, why not? One, two, three. Oh, wow, Ooh. that's acidic. Mm. Ah. Mm, but not bad. It's almost like tarty. Not that it's like late for class, but like very tart. I'm gonna say that is better not on a scale of one, one to five hot things, I'm gonna give it a, a two, a two hot. All right, that's four. <laughs> give it to me for breakfast. You would have this for breakfast? Just like, oh, let me just warm up some orange juice and... I mean, I would prefer it cold, but I don't really care. All right, next one. This one seems to have a, uh, a sour gummy garnish to it. And there are things in this. This is hot, sour Skittle water. I don't know how that works. <laughs> this is a hot cup of liquid Sour Hot Skittles? sour Skittle water. None of this makes sense to me. I don't like sour. I need an explanation from everyone on my desk by the end of the day. Why and how? It looks like tomato soup. It like does I, look to like tomato okay, soup. Okay, I guess let's take a sip. Mm. Okay, wow. Wow, that's actually good. That is surprisingly good. Man, I had a lot of dread for nothing. Uh, yeah, me now, too. <laughs> that is delightful. This, I mean, come on. Pumpkin spice Cheers latte, to you. get out of here. We have sour, sour Skittles. Skittle water. <laughs> Still working on the name. I don't even like sour Skittles and I love this drink. I really like this. It wow. tastes like you can taste the rainbow, but it's just warmer yeah. and like in a more chiller, candlelit mood, you know? Five hot. This is really, really good hot. I do think that it'd be really good in like a snow cone or something. This would be amazing as a snow cone. Yeah. Oh, ma'am. All right, so this last cup is a uh, Garnished with a nice little candy cane. Oh my goodness. Do you recognize the candy cane? No, no, it's no. It's like acidic. Jamie. It's eating, oh, it's completely gone. Yeah, I recognize the clam. Candy cane. It's a clamdy cane. Oh no, oh yeah. dear, please sit health. The clam water, remember? Remember clam water? People just bottle it, they put it in a bottle. <laughs> it's clam juice, <gasps> everyone's favorite juice. Oh, oh, oh gosh. Right Oh, you can rub yeah. it into the skin. And they say, hey, you know what? New hot drink of the of the winter season. Clam juice water. All right, Jamie, let's take a sip. Okay. Let's take a sip. All right. You ready? You ready? Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> I exited my human body for a second there. <laughs> Lucky. Oh. Uh. That is awful. It's times like this, I wish I didn't have a tongue. <laughs> it tasted mm. like something dead. Huh. I'm just really sad. Why would you take the juice of a clam? It should never be done. But you take the juice of a clam and say, let's heat this puppy up. If I were to rate this on a scale of one to five, um, I would I would rate it a run as fast as you can. I I honestly think, if, if, if I am being honest, someone who would probably enjoy this drink. Quiz, man. Ka-ching! The buck stops here. Time for the quiz thing. Gold, hard, cash. 
I mean, when you think about it, it's really just paper, but it's a good thing we have it. Before money, people had to barter like this. Hey, can I give you a full wrap bag for that full bag of beans? A full wrap bag? That's a barter bargain. Here you go. Hey, this is only a half full wrap bag. This was not a fair exchange of rats and beans. The problem was determining a fair value. We needed something that we could all agree could be exchanged for goods and services. So the solution was money. And I mean actual paper money. I'm not just saying like the solution was money. That was so money. I'm saying like we, we needed money. I'm saying like that solution was paper dollar bills. Which one of these historical mega all-stars was instrumental in designing the first colonial money? Was it A, Benjamin Franklin, B, George Washington, C, Thomas Jefferson, or D, Aaron Burr? It wasn't Mr. Aaron Burr, sir. You guys only know these names because of Hamilton. I'm just pointing that out. If you said A, you get an A plus. Mr. Penny saved as a penny earned. Benjamin Franklin was the first person to print colonial money. And he put all kinds of phrases and pictures on the money so that you might actually learn something when you're inspecting those dollar bills to make sure that they're actually real. He wanted money to quote, make an impression on the mind. And those colonial dollar bills, the denominations were all over the place. There was like an $80 bill and a $6 bill with a picture of a beaver on it. I know this one's not fake because it's got the picture of a beaver on it. Speaking of forgotten denominations, which of these coins never existed in American currency? Was it A, the half penny, B, the half dime, C, the trime, or D, the 30 cent piece? If you said C, the trime actually existed. Look it up, it's a three cent dime. It's a real thing. I wish we still had the trime. That sounds pretty cool. Hey man. You got any trimes? I'm trying to get a soda. No, actually it's D, it's the 30 cent piece. I made that one up. Back in the day, colonial money was weird and wonderful. Back then you could get a full wrap bag for only five trimes. You know, today we're so used to the way our money works, we rarely stop to think about what's actually on it or how much it's actually worth. Jesus knew that money was gonna make an impression on our minds. So he determined where you could add the most value with your giving. Let's say you get some money. You're probably gonna spend some of it, that's cool. And I know you're gonna save some of it because that's really smart. But the first thing you're gonna do because you live a life of generosity is you're gonna look for an opportunity to give some of it away. That's where Jesus said we should start with our tithes and our offerings. Oh man, we've all heard this before. What does tithe mean? Come on, shout it out. 10%. We already know this, right? We hear this all the time. It's 10%. A tithe is t giving back to God 10% of what he gave to us. And then an offering is anything above and beyond that. As you plan to be generous, Jesus told us who we should give our money to. He said we should focus our giving on people with needs and people sowing seeds. People with needs are orphans, widows, uh, people dealing with poverty or food scarcity. And then people sowing seeds are um, people in the local church and missionaries. Do you have any idea how much the world can change when you give to people with needs and people sowing seeds? You're participating in the restoration of the world. Your giving is a chance to put the world back to the way that God intended it. You're adding value. So look for ways to be generous. Start with 10%, but don't stop there. Make an impression on some minds by living a generous, generous life. I'm the quiz man, goodbye. Mark and Luke were friends of Jesus who loved to tell stories about him and what they saw Jesus do when he was on earth. One story they both tell is about a time when Jesus was sitting in the temple watching people put money in the offering box. He was watching as crowds of wealthy people were bringing large sums of money to give. They dropped off any extra treasure they had laying around. But then a widow who was poor and didn't have much walked up to the box. She pulled two small coins out of her pocket. These coins weren't symbols of wealth. They were the smallest currency available called mites. They were like pennies. It was all she had, and she gladly put it all into the offering. Jesus jumps up and says, did you see that? His disciples gathered around. Mark and Luke were ready to take notes. Jesus said, that woman just gave the most. Somebody was probably like, but it was only two small coins. Didn't you see that wheelbarrow of cash that the last guy brought? And Jesus says, can't you see? She gave everything she had. Her two small coins are worth more because it was a sacrifice. 
That was all she had to live on. Instead of applauding the way the wealthy people gave, Jesus gave his recognition to the devotion of the poor widow. She made it a priority to give to others over her own needs. It might seem upside down, but that's how God's economy works. Just like Jesus saw the widow's heart, God sees your heart when you give. Generosity isn't always about how much you give, but also how much it costs. This month, you know, we've been talking all about generosity. And today I wanted to just speak to you about one of the lies that people talk about when it comes to generosity. And that is this, that you have to have money and give money to be generous. Although having money and being able to give money is a great way to be generous, another way that you can be generous is by giving of your time. Maybe it's simply just giving somebody a piece of encouragement or making somebody's day by shooting me a text message saying, hey, hope you're doing well, I'm praying for you. And the last way that you can be generous is through your talents, whether that's serving at your campus on the weekend or serving a neighbor or like we are today, serving with one of your local mission partners. And here's the deal when it comes to being generous. You can't just accidentally be generous. You have to plan to be generous. You know, it is said, if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. And so with your generosity, make a plan. If you're going to go serve somewhere, write it on your calendar, call ahead, make sure they know you're coming. Or maybe you're gonna serve the homeless. You can always just pack a bag full of bread and snacks. That way, if you see somebody in need, you can simply give it to them. But just like I said, you can't just accidentally be generous. You have to plan to be generous. And be prayerful with your generosity. Don't just give randomly. Ask God what it is that He wants you to give and then follow and trust in Him. I think that we handled this hot topic very carefully. This drink was awful. You don't have to have money in order to be generous. You can share your resources, your encouragement, as well as your attention and your skills. Money can be harmful, but it can also make things better. Plan to be generous with what God gives you and you won't overthink it. Until next time, enjoy enjoy the the ride. ride. Things <laughs> still going. <laughs> if you want to learn more about money, we have this really cool video where Chaz teaches us about money and money skills. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can check out our other awesome videos. Yeah, and don't microwave or heat up clam juice. Just as a, just as a free advice. You should though leave us a comment.